So I think there's few things that are as intimidating as talking in front of a room full of really smart students. So wish me luck. Um, I'm used to singing a lot, uh, but I'm looking forward to today. Um, I'm just going to play a little music real quick. Crashes before me, and suddenly everything I ever knew crumbles before my eyes. Everything I've ever loved has steadily drifted away from me, and I. So uh, my talk today is titled Creating the Future, Drawing from Tradition, specifically exploring applications of South India's classical music in modern contexts. Um, True productive animation must be grounded in a robust foundation. I believe that that applies to any field, and my field happens to be music. Again, thank you guys so much for having me. My name is Sid Sriram. I'm a producer, singer-songwriter, playback singer, and a Carnatic musician. Um, I was born in Chennai in 1990, and in 1991, my family decided to move to the US. So that's where I grew up, that's where I spent all my school years, um, and I also went to college there. But I would make frequent trips to Chennai to study a very, very special art form called Carnatic music. So I come from a family of musicians. My grandfather was a very prolific Carnatic musician. My mother is a Carnatic music teacher. So basically, I was thrown into this beautiful world uh, from the age of three, that's when I started learning. Um, and Carnatic music basically formed my whole foundation. It formed my framework of how I understood music, how I understood myself, and it would then become my way of exploring and approaching all of my musical endeavors in the future. Um, so a large part of what I'm going to talk about today is my understanding of this music form and how I've been able to take it and apply it in a bunch of different ways. Um, so just a raise of hands, how many of you guys are familiar with Carnatic music or have had any experience with it? Cool, so a fair amount of you. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is a very complex, somewhat abstract concept called the ragam. So one of the most fundamental backbones of Carnatic music is this construct or concept called a ragam. Uh, very basically, it is a melodic framework, but it is much more than just that. So before I continue, let's just define what a melody is. It's quite obvious, but uh, a melody can be defined as a set of notes strung together in a way that creates a memorable, most of the time memorable, musical idea. Um, some very memorable melodies to me, you know, this is not just in Carnatic music, but across genres. Um, let's take a film melody. Then another melody that comes to mind is a song by Nirvana, it Smells Like Teen Spirit. Load up on guns, bring your friends, it's fun to lose 
and to pretend. And then here's an example of a Carnatic song used in a film context. So in all these instances, here are melodies that have been composed so beautifully that they instantly stick. So, coming back to Carnatic music, the ragam construct, what it is, if you're really digging deep into what a ragam is, it is a very nuanced and specific set vocabulary of melodic phrases. So, I'll sing a few different ragams and just kind of give you some examples. The first one that comes to mind for me is a ragam called Todi. Mm. Pada pa pada pa maga ara ta na na pada pada pa ma pada pa ma pada pa ma pada pa ma ga ma da pa ma ga ri sa ri ga ma pada ma ma ta la so some of the phrases in Todi would be pada pa ma ma. Kama padani dapa mama padani padama padani sada niri sa. So it's a very distinct set of phrases that make up this ragam. Another ragam can be Kamboji. Talanana nalarana. Sani da pada magama pada pada sasara tara ma munara nala karahara priya talana nanara tara nala na So I've just outlined three different ragams, and I think what makes Carnatic music so special is that each ragam is almost like a human being, where they're made up of these phrases that are quite complex and full of dimension, and they're so vastly different from one another. Each ragam is like its own person, carrying a set of textures, a set of emotions, um, and they really kind of come to life when you hit the essence of what each ragam is. Uh, another ragam, which is the same ragam as Ale Payude is Kannada. So, here we have a very classical form of music, possibly one of the oldest musical traditions in the world. And with each of these ragas, I've just tried to outline what makes them them, what's giving them their identity. Um, and something very interesting happens when you take something that is traditional and something that should not be diluted, and when you take it in its entirety and it's in, in its complete form, but you juxtapose it against a separate context. And I'm going to just try something out real quick over here. Dani ma pa pa, still Canada. Dani sa ri sa pa ma pa ma ga ma da da. Ma dani sa ri sa ri pa ga ma ri sa ni sa da ni ri sa sa. Dani ma pa pa, dani ma pa. 
Tani sapa maga mata, ni sari gari sapa. Tani sapa maga mati, everything falls, everything rises up again. We've been through it all. Been through it all together. So what happens here is you take Kannada, you take a ragam that is very pure, it's very Carnatic. You take the essence of it and you put it against a context that would never be in. See, Indian classical music is linear in that it's all melodic. If you go to an Indian or Carnatic concert, at least you'll see a vocalist. Let's say. Uh, a violinist who's following the same melodic motifs that the singer is, is kind of moving through and then there's a percussion element. But there is no harmony to that. There's no idea of chords that are outlining what's being played. And it's been like this for centuries. Um, but something very interesting happens when you take these essential phrases of said ragam and you put them against chords. It colors it in a way that is very unique and probably hasn't really been done before. Um, now you guys might be wondering why is he going on and on about ragams and, and Carnatic music and so on and so forth. And I, I think when I looked up the word ecstasis and I was telling them earlier today, I had to look up how to pronounce that more times and how to remember what it means, but I think I got it. Um, and it's shedding old skin. And you know, that really got me thinking, what does it mean to shed old skin? What is that process all about? What comes with that process? And what is the significance of that process in this day and age? Um, so that led me to kind of think about what does that mean to me? You know, as Sid Sriram, the singer, uh, Carnatic musician, so on and so forth. Um, and what I really came to realize is that shedding skin, growing new skin, evolving, innovating, is a very interesting process. Through the process of evolving, you know, when you do shed old skin and you do grow new skin, you internalize new constructs, you internalize new concepts, um, you let those realizations manifest in completely new ways, you're thrown into new experiences. Um, but one thing that remains intact through all of this is one's core essence, what makes a person them. Um, in my case, Carnatic music is my identity. It's what I grew up with. It's what I spent all my years to this day studying, spending my time with, really kind of putting in my work. Um, so Carnatic music is my heritage. It's my foundation. So when I think about growing new skin and all the different ways that I've evolved over the past five to ten years, I think about how is this music form that is somewhere deep within me, how has that still remained intact even though I've kind of had these different outgrowths of, of musical experiences? Um, and I think the realization, the epiphany that I came to through the process of really preparing for this talk is the fact that however much you innovate, however much you want to evolve, those processes are empty without realizing that the foundation that makes you you some would call it heritage, others would call it foundation, others would call it your essence. If that's not kept intact, then whatever ideas you have to move forward, ideas you have to innovate, are fairly baseless. Um, so let's rewind a little bit. Back in 2012, I was given the amazing opportunity to sing for Era Monster. Um, he had called me. I was studying at Berkeley College of Music. I'd sent him an email with some of my music, some original music I was working on, and he had responded to that email miraculously. Um, so the first song that I ever sang in films was from the film Kadal. Uh, for the, the song was something that was 
very peculiar to me at the time because it really brought together two completely separate worlds. One was the blues and the other world was Tamil cinema. Um, so when Adiye happened, I think, now that I think about it in retrospect, it's a perfect example of how growing new skin can really manifest in ways that allows you to still keep you and your identity intact. Pallaguri pada puri ala Wanna nambi varene In the kati paya wari ati kuti pola Wampinna suttirene Adiye, adiye Yenna yangani kuti pora Adiye, adiye so, thank you. So I think my experience with Carnatic music is microcosmic. I think the realizations that I've come to through my study of Carnatic music has really opened me up to who I am as an individual. Um, it wasn't always like this. There was a long time before I came to these sets of realizations where I tried to keep my different worlds apart. When I was listening to hip hop music, I would only listen to that. And I, for some reason, thought that that was so completely separate than any of my other musical endeavors. Um, like I said before, I was a kid that was born in India, but grew up in the US. So that came with its own set of identity crises um, and trying to figure out who exactly I was. Um, I realized the power in me as an individual moving forward and the power of evolution and innovation when it really clicked was when I realized that these things can all revolve around each other and coexist. Um, when I realized that I don't have to separate myself from my foundation, my identity and my culture um, to trailblaze and try new things out and really push the envelope. Um, really, I guess in conclusion, I think the most important thing to realize at this stage of anyone's evolution, I think it starts with the individual and then that can grow out into being a societal thing and then a country thing. Um, one has to really embrace who they are. One has to figure out first and foremost what exists deep within themselves, whatever that is. For my, in my case, it was music, so it took me a while to come to my realizations. But once that realization is struck, the scope, the potential of what can come after is infinite. Um, I'm going to sing one last song. And then I'm going to open it up to questions because I, I really want to interact with you guys, if that's OK. Is that cool? Cool, OK. Um, just one second. Da-da-da-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na
Can anyone guess what song I'm going to sing now based on what I just sang right there? You guys are good. Marvarte pesade Madi meed ni tungid Imai pola naan ka 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 na vai Ni marid Mail togai pola viralunnai varidum Mana pada mai urayadal nigarum Virini rum vinaga Imaitanda kuda dena Tuliaga nan serte Kadalaga kanana de Marandalum nanunai Ninai kadanalilaye Pirindalum yalalbu Oripozum poilaye Pesade Madi Midni Tungide. Thank you guys.